Hey guys, uh, in this video I'll be talking about permanent notes. Uh, so we've spoken already about fleeting notes and literature notes. Now uh, another one that I haven't spoken about is the idea of the daily logs. Uh, so within the daily logs, in addition to writing about uh, things that's done and what you're working on, stuff like that, it's also a good place just to flesh out uh, any ideas. Uh, or anything that you're thinking about and just to consider um, the stuff that you've already read to reread the things that you've read and just think about how they kind of relate to each other. Uh, so the daily log in addition to the fleeting notes and literature notes are a great source for uh, generating insights uh, to put into your permanent notes. Uh, so when you go through your notes generally and I think it's a good idea just to reread a lot of the notes that you've taken um, spaced out through time uh, to consider some questions uh, to help you uh, put uh, new ideas and insights into permanent notes. And these can include things like, does this, new, does this information, uh, does it contradict, does it correct, does it confirm or add to what you already know? Can you combine this idea that you're learning about with something that you already know or another note? Um, what further questions does this information trigger? How does this idea fit into uh, my theory of so-and-so? Um, does this, uh, can I combine or connect this idea with something else? Uh, what are the main differences between this and this other thing? Uh, so I hope that, uh, and also when you're looking at information, uh, what, uh, what isn't there? Um, is there something missing? Is there something that you think that should be there? Uh, and uh, hopefully some of those questions can sort of get you going uh, in terms of uh, fleshing out any particular um, ideas that you're working on or uh, research or uh, whatever it may be that uh, you're working with. Now uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Evergreen Notes which is a very useful concept developed by Andy. Uh, it's very similar to Permanent Notes but I'd say that he goes uh, more into details uh, in uh, the types of evergreen. So there are four different types of evergreen notes, four kind of like large main categories of evergreen notes. And he defines uh, each uh, note type within evergreen notes. So whereas um, with permanent notes, uh, Lumen, when he developed the Zettelkasten system, if you look at his permanent notes, they are generally um, complete sentences and they're uh, generally in his words and they're uh, usually publishable insights. Uh, Lumen, he published you know, over 60 books, uh, hundreds of papers, he generated a lot of insights and the purpose for him in using the Zettelkasten system is generally to produce publishable works. Uh, and so if you look at his permanent notes, they're all, you know, like fully developed um, uh, sentences and uh, insights uh, and that are ready to publish. Uh, so how you choose to use the Zellkasten system, I mean, it's generally a very useful system, but how you choose to use it uh, is completely up to you. I think there are a lot of useful things that you can take out of it uh, and uh, not necessarily have to use it to generate publishable insights, but just to advance your own knowledge on certain topics and to develop your own ideas. Uh, so going back to uh, evergreen notes, so the way that Andy's uh, divided it is into four different types. Uh, the first type is what he calls um, stubs. Uh, I've put it here as uh, placeholders or backlinks. So some examples include, for example, uh, note taking or list of psychological biases. So this is where I'll have a bunch, a whole within, like I'll show you here. So within uh, psychological biases, I've got a whole bunch of different uh, psychological biases. So the page houses um, a list of the different psychological biases that we have. Uh, and so this is a nice placeholder to house all the biases in the one place. So the second one is uh, terms of art, uh, which are just a simple definition of things. Uh, so in this case, I've got confirmation bias, which is a form of bias, uh, cognitive uh, bias that we have, uh, where we'll um, only look for information that confirms what we already believe. 
they can also include what uh, Andy terms bridge notes. And this is when you have uh, an idea that you've developed on your own and then you find someone else's ideas who are that's very similar. Uh, but there are subtle differences, and so it doesn't make sense to merge them, but rather to create a bridge in between uh, and have your notes uh, on one side and the other person's ideas on the other, and then have uh, a uh, and have a note in between, uh, which which links them and notes the similarities and differences on that note. So, for example. Uh, this idea between zero cast and evergreen notes. Uh, this is something that Andy's got on his website and he lists what the similarities and differences are and that's an example of a bridge note. Uh, the third type is uh, precise and narrow declarative notes. So this is where things become more, uh, so I'd say like a high level of thinking uh, takes place and where you need to generate more kind of uh, insightful thought. Um, and they're typically uh, full sentences, they're typically precise, they're typically narrow and they're declarative. So one example is the unexamined life is not worth living. And uh, so this is a quote from Socrates, and uh, this is uh, this fleshes out uh, the idea behind the sentences more, so that behind every experience there's room for an interpretation of that experience, uh, and it's in the interpretation, that examination uh, of what life amounts to, uh, that life becomes worth living, and. Uh, and, uh, and uh, the other way that this can be formed is not necessarily just as a declarative sentence, but also as, uh, as a question, especially when uh, things are still uncertain and maybe something you've read has just triggered another question, which is worth um, fleshing out. Uh, so one example might be, to what degree does no, uh, does no taking actually impact long-term uh, thinking and learning? So uh, we take it as a given, for example, that note-taking must improve um, our, uh, our overall learning, um, but, uh, it, uh, and, but it, that can be just an illusion. Uh, we might feel like we're learning, but um, if measured over a very long period of time, say after five years, how much of that is actually true? Uh, how much of that is actually retained versus just you know, reading um, whatever it is that you're reading? Uh, now, the fourth type is uh, the connector nodes, what he calls the API nodes. And uh, these are meta nodes. These are nodes that are built upon uh, your other evergreen nodes, and they can also connect uh, your nodes as well. So these are nodes about the nodes, and they can be built on top of the nodes, or they can be about uh, the nodes themselves. So one example uh, that I've written here is that emotional distancing and time enables better decision making. And this is built on a bunch of different articles and ideas that I've developed. So one is the idea of cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, which takes in uh, different scenarios to help you gain distance. Uh, the reason why CBT works is because it helps you gain distance to the situation and allows you to see things more clearer and that's kind of one of the underlying basis for uh, that form of therapy. Uh, this is how close am I to this? Uh, so this is, I'll uh, put that into the main screen here. So the idea behind this article is the closer you are to something, the more your judgment is likely to be impaired. And then it goes into more details here. I won't go through it now. Um, and uh, another sort of another permanent note here is the harder you work, the more confidence you get. So so irrespective of uh, irrespective of um, whether it's uh, true or not, when you do something a lot, in other words, the repetition of that thing makes you think that that thing is uh, more true and you get more confidence in whatever it is uh, that you're doing. So if you think that this one way of that you've been doing something, um, let's say you know you're making a piece of furniture or whatever, anything of this one way, you've been doing it this one way for a very long time, then after, let's say, when you discover some new way of doing it, because you've done it for so long, you have a very high level of confidence that this is, this is the best way to do things. So these are the sort of, so I haven't fleshed this one out, but these are the different things that are supporting uh, the, uh, the statement here. 
Now let's go back into the notes. Here we go. Okay. Now in terms of the principles for the notes themselves, uh, in terms of the titles, uh, they should be atomic, uh, they should be sharp, uh, so very kind of focused, complete, uh, positively framed. So what that means is that uh, writing, reading on the iPhone doesn't work. Uh, that's negatively framed. Uh, whereas if you say, use the iPhone for capturing ideas or use the iPhone for listening to audiobooks. Uh, use the sorry, use the iPhone for information capture, for example, um, is a much better title. Or note taking systems don't work. Uh, versus saying that effective note taking uh, uh, needs to have a specific goal in mind for it to work. Um, so this is a more positively framed uh, title, and that generally uh, is a more useful title to have as an evergreen note. Okay, so those are the main things uh, at a very high level. Uh, and uh, I think uh, depending on what it is that uh, you're using the system for, I think it's very useful just to get a good understanding uh, of these concepts and principles and find ways to use them for yourself so that they're um, useful for you and you can feel free to adapt it and uh, use it for your own purpose. Uh, I've done. I've certainly done that for myself. I mean, the way that I've set up this note here, you can do it in however way you feel uh, makes the most sense. So I hope you found this uh, video useful, and I'll see you on the next one.